wait, get more input so that we don't mess up the patent system any more than we already have. Uh, my time's expired, I know, or is about to, so uh, I yield back so that my friend from California may take time. The gentleman's time has expired. Members are reminded to restrain from personal references towards the president. Under the speaker's announced policy of January 3rd, 2013, the chair recognizes the gentleman from California, Mr. Rohlbacher, for 30 minutes. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And uh, uh, let me thank uh, uh, my f good friend, Mr. Gomert, for that heartfelt expression. Uh, yeah, there are problems at whatever area of government we look at. There are ways that we can improve it. But there are also problems in government that can be used as an excuse, as a cover for a power grab by very special interest groups in our country to change the law in the name of, 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 of what? Of dealing with a serious problem, but then what comes out of it is, has, uh, has something to do with the interest of that special interest rather than curing the problem. Uh, we, that is what is going on today when we deal, when we hear all of this talk about the patent, patent system. Uh, we must all ask ourselves, do we want to be known as the Congress that killed the U.S. patent system, which has served the American people well for 225 years? Let's note that there are very powerful interests in this country. Uh, Mr. Gomert and I have been fighting them on a number of fronts. We call them globalists because what they are interested in is making sure <clears throat> that our economy <clears throat> and our rules and our rights are based in a global system that eventually will be run by the United Nations or whoever. But we've got multinational corporations trying to break down uh, things like the patent law that have been unique to the United States and granted the American people many more rights than are granted uh, to the people of other countries. So once again, we are talking about reforming the patent system. After 20 years of fighting on these issues, again, we have a salami approach by people, a lot of people who don't even believe in the patent system, who are trying to change the fundamentals of our system. Well, just last year, we passed the American Inventors Act, and it just went to, into effect earlier this year, <clears throat> and now we have patent lawyers, the courts, and inventors trying to figure out the implications of the changes of that last law from last year. And that was one of the most sweeping changes to the present American patent system that we ever had. Why are we rushing into it now before we even know what the results are from the patent bill that we passed last year? Well, not even before uh, uh, we are able to judge the American Invents Act. This other patent bill is now being rammed through this house. Let me repeat that. It's being rammed through at breakneck speed, not giving the people on the outside, because there are powerful interest groups on the outside that are pushing for these changes, because that will permit them, basically, it will permit the big guys to steal the, uh, from the little guys. And yeah, okay, these big multinational electronics companies want to steal from America's uh, independent inventors. They are ramming their changes in the patent system through this house at breakneck speed so that people on the outside are not going to be able to notice what is going on and how it will impact them. Well, the word's getting out. It's spreading out throughout America, whether it's our universities or whether it's people in biotech or our pharmaceutical industries or the American Bar Association or, uh, or our small inventors throughout the country. People are beginning to notice the danger that we are in by this rapid movement of legislation through the system. I wish I could simply focus on the bad provisions of this new bill, the, as I say, the Innovation Act of uh, H.R. 3309. I call it the Anti-Innovation uh, Act. And, but that bill is expected to be on the floor in the next couple days. But if the bill is bad, okay, 
the process now being used to get that bill through the system is they're using their stifling debate they're having such limited time that people aren't able to really go in and see what's what's involved in this bill remember the last time when we actually looked at it uh, we tried to pass a significant piece of legislation before people had a really chance to examine it and look at it well uh, having a Having this bill rammed down our throats at such breakneck speed is even worse than the bill itself. Uh, in the one Judiciary Committee hearing, they only had one on this particular bill, witness after witness strongly recommended moving slowly and warned of unintended consequences. Uh, well, it takes a, a few minutes to consider each provision of this bill. Only a few minutes it takes to see that they are aimed, they may, and they may be just aimed, that's given the benefit of the doubt that they're single, that there is a single thorn in the side of the mega electronics companies that are behind this bill, and that is that you have small inventors who will come up and say, you have violated my, uh, my patent long after they have just ignored the patent and went and used it anyway without the inventor's permission. Well, that one thorn in the side of the mega, uh, these mega electronic companies, uh, to get rid of that, they're willing to create much more pain in other industries, in our educational institutions, in researchers, especially pain for America's individual, yes, independent inventors. In the rush to get H.R. 3309 onto the floor so quickly, there has not been a single full day of a full day legislative day, that is, between the time this legislation passed the Judiciary Committee, which that means that when it passed the Judiciary Committee, that's when it's available to House members to consider and to submit amendments to the Rules Committee. Well, there has not been one legislative day. This happened right before the vacation, right before we went off for Thanksgiving, and thus, we, could, uh, we didn't have time, and everybody's off for Thanksgiving. When are we going to get our amendments uh, put together? Well, rushed into our amendments. I came down here 15 minutes ago because I was up in the Rules Committee, finally, where we put together some amendments to try to deal with the dark side of, of this uh, patent uh, uh, law and this patent bill that's going through. So it is going, as I say, going to create a lot more a lot more pain uh, for other industries because we won't have had a chance to look at it and amend it uh, than it is to do good for the electronics industry. And by the way, the electronics industry should be treating the small inventor fairly. And if someone has a legitimate patent and they have ignored it, they should pay that person damages because that person owns what he created. Instead, what we've had is a society where these mega companies are faced by an inventor who, and they just say, well, sue us. Go sue me and see what you think. And what this bill does, of course, is make it much more difficult for the small inventor, the small inventor to be able to sue because it creates much more, a much heavier burden on the small inventor. So it seems that we have, uh, that if we have to pass this bill, uh, you know, with such a rapid bill, we're going to have to pass the bill before we realize everything that's in the bill. Well, that shouldn't be happening again after the last debacle of Obamacare, which now has turned into a disaster for our country. That's what's going to happen to the patent system that's, uh, uh, and, and the confusion that's going to happen when we rush in to passing legislation. I'm calling on my friends and colleagues who haven't had time to fully understand the implications of this legislation to join me in demanding a postponement, just a postponement of the vote to pass the bill until after this holiday season is over. That will give us time to consult with our own constituents, with experts, with, with inventors, but other people from other industries rather than this, this big electronics Google industry gang. Uh, so we need to know what the real implications of the legislation are. So we need to, what, postpone the vote. 
And if you can't postpone the vote, kill this bill and start writing a new one and give everybody a chance to have their say, their, their input into the bill. We are told that this bill is aimed at the threat of so-called patent trolls. You will hear that over and over again. These so-called villainous trolls are patent holders. That's what they are. A patent troll is a, someone who owns a patent or a company that represents patent holders. They are engaged in defending their rights against infringement of those patents they own. There's all of these implications that we're talking about invalid patents. No, we're talking about legitimate rights that were granted to our, the American people to own a patent that's in our Constitution, and these are legitimate these are leg legitimate patents, but we, but there's this aura, oh, this, uh, this, the, the, the innuendo that these are abusive patents. These are, what's an abusive patent? It's when somebody like, uh, like Google is using your patent and refusing to acknowledge that it's yours and you've got to take them to court and you're a little guy and they will do anything to stop the little guys from taking them to court and, to, uh, and winning. Uh, these patents that we're talking about are just as valid as, as any other patent that's granted by the patent office. And these huge corporations, we're talking about people who have, have quite often intentionally infringed on a patent. What that means is they have intentionally stolen the patent from a little guy who they don't think has the, right, has the power, financially and otherwise, to enforce his patents through the court. These huge infringers would have us believe that the patents that we're talking about are questionable, they're invalid, or unworthy of being patented. Well, that is not the case. That is not what this bill does. What this bill does is make it more difficult for honest and, and, and forthright people who are, who are patent owners or are, they, are independent inventors to enforce their constitutional rights of ownership. The patents that are being targeted by the multinational electronics firms are legitimate by and large. But, were the, but, uh, but they were the projects. These, these patents were the project of small inventors who don't have the means to defend themselves. Oh, but what makes these vilified patents different, by the way, than the good patents that are owned by these large corporations themselves? Well, it's the so-called patent troll again. That happens to be a lawyer, and this is defined, the patent troll, is a lawyer who takes on a case specifically to defend the little guy from theft. But the lawyer didn't invent it. He's only there for the money. How shocking that we have lawyers who are defending clients only because the lawyer's going to make money on it. That's how our system works. That's what happens. You get lawyers to argue your case before a judge and, to get, and get a fair hearing. There is nothing wrong with having a lawyer decide that he's going to get involved and help a, a, a guy for a percentage of what the, it's a percentage of what the case results in and what the uh, decision will be. Uh, being uh, out of out for profit from uh, even though the person did not invent the technology is not in any way something that's disgraceful or bad. In fact, these lawyers have become, uh, have become a champion of little guys who don't have the resources to enforce their own patent. Or they could be an, in, an individual or a company, but they buy the rights, or they can buy the rights from these, uh, uh, from these small inventors. And uh, uh, let me just say, if the inventor is being cheated out of her right, his or her rightful compensation, it is a good thing that there is a lawyer there or anyone else there who wants to invest in that to make sure that that inventor gets just and rightful compensation. Now, uh, I happen to have been uh, very concerned about these changes in the patent law, and I've had meetings over the last couple months and I happened to have a meeting with a businessman, a very prominent businessman, who was in the meeting when the term patent troll was originated. Surprise, surprise, the term patent troll was thought of by a group of business executives of how they could demonize the, the, they demonized those people who were, who were suing their companies for infringement on the, pat, on the patent rights. 
how they were going to do that. They knew they couldn't demonize the independent inventor, the small inventor. Americans think so too highly of that. So they decided they would demonize the lawyers and try to divert the attention of the American people away from the issues at hand to try to undermine the ability of the little guy to, to uh, make his case before uh, the courts and thus demonize the lawyer who was representing him uh, or the lawyer that had helped by in take, taking on the case. So that, uh, that discussion took place. How cynical can you be? And the word was uh, the person who I was talking to said, and I suggested that we use the term patent pirate. But that wasn't sinister enough. So every time you hear the word patent troll, remember, it is a way to try to get you uh, uh, to think of a person that they're vilifying rather than the actual issues at hand. And the issues at hand are talking about theft by the big guys of the little guys, of the little guys' patents who can't afford uh, to defend their own constitutional patent rights. Now, I've spoken with independent inventors, conservative political organizations, the American Bar Association, industry groups like, like, uh, a big, like pharma and, and biotech. We have major universities today, an organization representing 2,000 universities that have research projects within those universities, all of whom affirmed that H.R. 3309, the so-called Innovation Act, uh, basically uh, is, is a bad bill for them. They understand that uh, what we've got is a big multinational, uh, uh, again, electronics companies behind this, but it will, it may help those companies, I have no doubt about that, it will help them shield them when they infringe on somebody's proper intellectual property. But it will hurt the rest of these people in the economy, whether it's other industries or whether it's our educational institutions. I suggest that members of the Congress go back to their districts. Give them a chance to go back to their districts. Talk to their small inventors. Talk to the small inventors in your district. See what they think about this poison, this poison patent legislation. See what the educators think about it. Think of what the universities think. Think about what people are in major industries that employ hundreds of thousands of people like biotech and, 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 and pharmaceuticals. Think about those things. Talk to those people and you'll find there's a very limited number of people who are being helped by this bill, but a tremendous swath across our economy of people who are being hurt by it, not to mention the fact that the small independent inventor is the source of our competitiveness, the source for, for, that has made America secure, made the American people prosperous because now we can outcompete others because we are technologically superior. No, the, the patent system has been too valuable for us to let one industry ram that through Congress with, with a flood of campaign donations that have been going on here for the last several years. Proponents of this legislation, as I say, have demonized the patent lawyers uh, just to draw attention away from the fact that, that these large companies have stolen someone else's patent protected technology. So it's the big guys versus the little guys. And guess what? In order to beat the little guys, the big guys are now changing the rules of the game that will hurt all kinds of people throughout the American economy. H.R. 3309 should be called, as I say, the Anti-Innovation Act. It is an aggressive attack on the ability of inventors to defend their ownership right to technology that they have invented. This is not about frivolous lawsuits, although you'll hear that all the time. Frivolous lawsuits and trolls. If, this is about all lawsuits. This is about all inventors, no matter how, how absolutely pure their motives are and their rights are clear. No, this will infringe, I mean, this will limit each and every independent inventor. This entire bill, every provision diminishes the ability of the small inventor to defend his, in, in his or her creation. It's a cynical cover, as I say, for creating the big guys and giving the big guys a license to steal from the little guys. The former patent office director, Kapos, 
and other former directors of the Patent Office have made it clear that we should move slowly and with great care in making such changes to the patent law. This legislation is too broad, its implications too unclear, its effect unknowable. That's what witnesses and experts indicate. That's what we hear from all around the United States from various very uh, significant uh, players in our economy. But that is not what is happening here in Congress. In Congress, we, this bill is being railroaded into passing, uh, and this is right on top of the passage of last year's legislation, as I say. So what's going on here? This is a heavy-handed attempt by mega multinational corporations to diminish the viability of America's patent system. This has been going on by these very same multinational corporations to try to diminish patent protection in America. This has been going on for 25 years, and I've seen it over and over again. We've had to fight this back. They want to harmonize America's patent system with Japan and Europe, who have weak systems that, that that are that the do not protect the individual inventor for example they tried to foist off we defeated this one they have been trying to make it so that if someone applies for a patent after 18 months this is what they do in Japan and in Europe after 18 months the patent application will be published would be published even though the patent hasn't been granted. I call that the Steel American Technologies Act. The same gang who tried to foist that on us years ago, little by every year they come up with a new change like that to diminish patent protection for the American people. That would have been the Steel American Technologies Act. Anybody who could have advocated that, uh, it was so blatant that we were able to defeat it outright. And now we face this challenge. According to the sponsors of H.R. 3309, this is an attempt, again, to combat patent trolls, even though there is a study that was mandated in that last bill that shows that uh, Congress, uh, uh, this much uh, heralded uh, problem of patent trolls, really isn't a major driver of lawsuits. And this has not, what, what has caused a new surge in lawsuits, interestingly enough, is that new legislation that was passed last year. Well, most of the provisions of the legislation will make getting involved in lawsuits more complicated, more costly, and more challenging to bring a lawsuit for a patent infringement. What does that mean? That means if the little guy needs to fight for his rights in court, we are making it more complicated, costly, and more challenging for the little guy. Of course, the big guys, they got a whole stable of lawyers working for them. And there you go. These people would restrict lawsuits that are totally legitimate in order to control a very few number of lawsuits that are manipulative of the system and thus are abusive. Rather than making it simpler, cheaper, and easier to defend against baseless accusations uh, uh, to and, uh, and thus reduce spurious lawsuits by strengthening the good guys, this bill is aimed at weakening the small inventor who are the ultimate good guys. In addition, under the claim of technical correction, this legislation proposes the removal of the patent system's only judicial review process. Get into this. Uh, since 19, excuse me, since 1836, Every inventor is known if, you, if we're, they're mistreated by the government officials who run the patent office. If, they're, if, if the decisions on their patent are made on, on criteria that is not legally established, they can go to court and they can, uh, and they can challenge that. And in fact, last year, this, uh, as, as late as last year, the Supreme Court in Capos versus Hyatt reaffirmed the importance of this judicial review. This bill takes that right away from the individual uh, inventor, from the independent inventor who's had this right since 1836, now can't go to the court, can't have his day in court if he's been treated illegally or wrongly. 
That's what's in this bill, along with a lot of other things. That's why the American Bar Association is opposed to this bill. I would like to quote my colleague, Mr. Lamar Smith, former chairman of the Judiciary Committee and primary author of the American Events Act, which was the last bill, and he was speaking of the new environmental regulations at the Science Committee just a few weeks ago. And uh, Mr. Speaker, I would ask permission to submit this quote from Mr. Smith into the record at this point. Without objection. Thank you. And uh, let me note, Mr. Smith was underscored the importance of having a judicial review of the actions of government employees, especially those in regulatory agencies. This principle applies just as certainly to patent review as it does to environmental regulations that Mr. Smith was talking about. Now patent office officials have requested that the judicial review uh, be done away with. They want to do away with it, and that's why it's in the bill, because they say it's too burdensome for them to defend what they, their, what they did as, a, as part of their job on the rare occasions when they are challenged in court, but it's just too burdensome for them. No mind, never mind who brings the claim to court uh, uh, is required the cost. You know, if someone is challenging them, they're going to have to cover their own costs. Well, the Patent Office just wants to strip away that right because Americans uh, don't really deserve to have uh, a day in court to challenge what government officials do because it's just too inconvenient for the bureaucracy. The legislation we, we expect before the House this week is consistent with a decades-long war uh, waged against America's independent inventors, which I've been talking about, and just this sort of arrogant attitude of of the, the independent inventor is being taken for granted. Well, let me tell you what the independent inventors have done. They've made our country secure. They've made our country uh, competitive. They've made American people, uh, our industries, able to pay our people good wages because we're more competitive with high technology and good technology. Technology has helped save our country and created the American way of life. This bill is the, it would stifle would kill American technological genius. The provisions of the Innovation Act will impact on every inventor in a negative way in America. The Innovation Act will create more paperwork. When an inventor files for an infringement claim, for example, that means somebody stealing his stuff, this will increase the cost to defend those rights and uh, the potential, of course, if you have to, many more, uh, much more paperwork then you give the court the, the ability to dismiss the case on technical requirements. Well, you didn't fill out this technicality. You missed that in the law. So it's making it more costly and a much more technically uh, uh, complicated. The Innovation Act will impose rules on the judicial, uh, on the judicial conference, meaning on our judges, uh, which run counter to uh, almost 80 years of established rulemaking process uh, whereby the courts have been establishing their own rules of procedure. Again, this law will be so, will dictate how the judges will make their decisions, and it, it is so uh, definitive that it will complicate the process and could end up with less justice, not more, because the judges will feel compelled not to use their common sense. If we want to get rid of, uh, of, of uh, burdensome, uh, the burden, of litigation that's nonsense, you know, frivolous litigation. Let's give the judges some more discretion in determining is this really uh, a, a, what is meant to be protected by our law instead of having to dictate the, the very basis for every one of their decisions. The Innovation Act will switch us to a loser pay systems, so the potential financial downside for a patent holder, meaning the little guy, increases dramatically. Thus, we have a situation where the big guy again, what does he care if he has to pay the legal fees for a little guy filing against him? But if the little guy loses and then has to pay for the legal fees of the big guy, massive, massive expense, which will bankrupt him for life. And the Innovation Act goes even further. It brings other people into that court and into that case. In fact, people who have an interest in that patent uh, such as investing in the company or licensing the patent, they can be brought into that loser pays court uh, action 
and thus they would have to then pay the expenses for this huge corporation if that little guy loses. You know what that means? Nobody is going to stand up for the little guy. They can't afford to take that risk. These big companies will squash them like bugs because they can absorb that kind of cost. This is the disincentive for people to support the efforts of small inventors whose rights are being denied. Now, They'll be, denying the, uh, they'll be denied the support of third parties. Oh, they can call them trolls if they want. They can say, oh, we're denying them troll. They're denying somebody else coming in and helping the little guy who can't afford, who can't afford to make sure that these big guys are not stealing his invention and giving him no compensation. The Innovation Act will create a new requirement that patent holders must once filing a claim of, for infringement, they must provide information about all the parties that means the infringer, these big guys, are going to get a list of all of their enemies. This is not tradition, consistent with American tradition, where we believe that people don't have to make themselves, uh, uh, put themselves at risk in order to help a good cause. This means the elimination of privacy in business dealings. The little guy is totally exposed, as his friends and suppliers will be totally exposed as well. The Innovation Act once this requirement has been invoked, will force the patent holder to maintain a new bureaucratic re reporting uh, uh, requirement and a fee that goes with that. Well, what does that mean? That means the little guy now has to keep books that he doesn't have to keep. His, his life is much more complicated because he has filed an infringement case. Uh, these are minor inconveniences to multinational corporations. They, they have bookkeepers. They have lawyers on, on trial. This means the little guy is going to be is going to be smashed. Is going to be smothered under under new requirements of this act. The Innovation Act will enable large multinational corporations to create nested shell companies as customers, which have few assets but can infringe on patents for a decade or more, while an inventor of course, cannot. Uh, the Innovation Act, let me add, uh, how much time do I have left, Mr. Speaker? Five seconds. Five minutes? Okay. Seconds. Oh, excuse me? Your time's expired. My you know, time's time expired. expired. Uh, let me just uh, close, Mr. Speaker, by suggesting that we have the support, and I will uh, ask that this list be uh, made part of the record of the multitude of interest groups from our country, educators, uh, uh, business, uh, large corporations, uh, Without people objection, throughout our country the who are opposed to this bill. And I would submit this for the record at this point. Without objection. And Pursuit I, to Clause 12A of Rule 1, the Chair declares the House in recess, subject to the call of the Chair. Earlier today, members passed a bill extending for 10 years the ban on the manufacture, sale, and possession of firearms that are undetectable by metal screening devices. The chamber also approved a measure directing the TSA to spend all loose change collected at airport security checkpoints on airport lounges for members of the military and their families, that total reaching almost half a million dollars last year. Later this week, work on a bill that would exempt most private equity firms from registering with the Securities and Exchange Commission. Follow the House live here on C-SPAN when members return Wednesday, 10 a.m. for morning hour, noon Eastern for legislative business. And earlier today, President Obama spoke.